is stranger than fiction, and invented truth is stranger than both. Get up! Get up! Harry, my face is totally bunged up. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 mockumentaries. It's fun to believe in things, but, but Carl Sagan in his book says just because it's fun to believe in things doesn't mean that we should believe in them. For this list, we're focusing on feature-length mockumentaries, a type of film in which fictional events are presented documentary style to create a parody that's either comical or serious. I made my mind up that it was Alice's body before, you know, I'd looked. We've decided to exclude found footage films, so if you're looking for the Blair Witch Project, we've already got you covered with our list of the top 10 found footage films. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Number 10, Dark Side of the Moon. The Apollo program was in fact the early stages of what was later to become Star Wars, the missile shield for defending the United States. Director William Carell's Dark Side of the Moon purports to tell the true story of the 1969 Apollo 11 moon landing. You know the deal, that the whole thing was all faked by director Stanley Kubrick at the request of the CIA. NASA's decision to lend Kubrick this legendary lens was the culmination of a story that had begun 15 years before. Carell tricked many people, including Kubrick's widow and astronaut Buzz Aldrin, into participating in his mockumentary. They became very aware how important the visual spectacle, spectacle is going to be. The result is doc-style film so skillfully done, many conspiracy theorists view it as a serious expose of NASA's duplicity. They decided that the space race had to be turned into a, a pure Hollywood product, a show. So they came to see us with, with one goal. It had to be absolutely amazing. Hollywood could do it. We could create the dream. All of Hollywood stopped working on other projects just for this. I mean, it was never seen before. Number nine, incident at Loch Ness. This whole thing about Loch Ness uh, is more or less a figment of our fantasy. Werner Herzog and Zach Penn collaborated on this film within a film mockumentary. Connect me to the Scottish Coast Guard. Loch Ness. Loch Ness. I don't know the number. Herzog is supposedly filming a documentary on the Loch Ness Monster. Penn is an unscrupulous Hollywood producer who creates a fake Nessie to add drama to the proceedings. You would start doing your narration as soon as it goes in the water, okay? okay? Except then the real Nessie shows up. Maybe. Get away from me! Get away! Incident at Loch Ness is fascinating fun that examines the whole concept of reality. All as one big prank. It's pathetic. Either you shoot this whoa, shot, whoa, whoa, or I'm going to shoot you, okay? I had heard the stories about Kinski and about, you know, Herzog directing Kinski with a gun pointed at him, and, you know, I just thought the gun was there, and, you know, I wasn't planning on shooting him. Number eight, it's all gone Pete Tong. He's on a different level now with how he listens to records, how he plays the records, and I think he's very special because no other DJ can do that. This Canadian mockumentary looks at Frankie Wilde, an incredibly successful DJ who's achieved wealth and fame. The problem, he's going deaf because he's constantly surrounded by loud music and drugs. Frankie's problem is actually quite a common problem amongst DJs. It's an occupational hazard, they're working in the clubs, and uh, the noise just uh, takes its toll. It's All Gone Pete Tong has some amazing sequences, particularly those in which Wilde hallucinates about a giant badger who represents his drug addiction. An emotional journey that's both funny and frustrating. It's an exciting comeback story with a fake DJ at its core. Speak up. These are the facts, Frank. These are the facts, Frank. We can't change them. You are deaf, man. You are a deaf man. Number seven, a mighty wind. There had been abuse in my family, uh, but it was mostly musical in nature. Uh, my father used to lock me away in a room with nothing but the uh, Percy Faith recording of Bim Bam Bomb, and uh, then send me to bed with nothing but dessert. Christopher Guest has made a career of mockumentaries, and a mighty wind is one of his funniest, and surprisingly touching as well. Just always kept you wanting to get there to understand him, which was impossible. In the film, three long disbanded folk groups reunite for a special reunion concert. Well, there's a puppy in the parlor and a skillet on the stove and a smelly old blanket that an apple. 
poking fun at a wide range of subjects, from folk music to the 1960s to show business, A Mighty Wind is a great showcase for some of the most talented improvisational actors in film. I got an idea, a very literate reference. I don't know if you're familiar with a book about a, a, a pirate captain. His name is Moby Dick. He was chasing a, some big whale, and he had a catchphrase. He'd always yell out, there she blows. So I thought if you could do that, we'd have someone on stage drench the whole group with water. Number six, Man Bites Dog. Et moi, j'ai changé l'instrument. Piano? No. Le bon verre d'eau. Fais attention, mon Dieu. Ça, ça se pique comme un cul. <laughs> Belgium's Man Bites Dog is an extremely dark comedy that follows a serial killer on his spree of death and mayhem. Ben là, je viens de terminer de lester le cœur, tu vois. C'est-à-dire, lester le corps, tu dois le, le remplir de certaines choses. Parce que tu vois, tu dois savoir que quand tu, tu immerges un, un corps dans l'eau, il se gonfle d'air, tu vois, et alors il a tendance à remonter à la surface. The fitting of its subject matter, Man Bites Dog, is graphically violent. And the fact that the killer is presented as witty and charismatic, and that the fictional film crew becomes drawn into his world, offends many. Oh, ça c'est une bonne idée, ça. Oh, une gaine. Oh, ça, c'est vraiment une bonne idée. La couleur est magnifique. Qu'est-ce qu'a choisi C'est André. Oh, merci beaucoup, André. Vraiment Ah oui, tu as vraiment fait bon choix. But Man Bites Dog also makes serious, thoughtful points about celebrity and humanity in the modern world through its mockumentary style. L'amour, elle laisse comme une traînée de soufre derrière lui, comme une odeur qui traîne. Et que malgré tout, dès que tu rencontres quelqu'un, tu sens. Un peu comme quand tu vas pisser et que tu sens tes doigts. Tu vois Number five, Waiting for Guffman. It's a tall tale that grows taller with each passing year. It's the story of Blaine. Director Christopher Guest plays Corky St. Clair, a community theater director in Blaine, Missouri. St. Clair is engaged to create a production in honor of the small town's sesquicentennial. And the whole cast becomes excited when a Broadway producer announces his intent to see the show. There's a mysterious scent in the night air. What? What kind of scent? What was this mysterious scent? It was the scent of salt water! <gasps> salt water? Salt water? <laughs> Filled with odd characters and outlandishly quirky humor, Guffman lovingly captures the egoism and exaggerated drama of amateur theatricals, while also paralleling Samuel Beckett's play Waiting for Gatto. In fact, you know, there's an old saying in Missouri that if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. In Blaine, I honestly believe, with hard work, we can, we can get that down to three or four minutes. Number four, FUBAR. Make it better. Turn up the good. Turn down the suck. Aging stoners get the mockumentary treatment in FUBAR. Oh, they like to play some of the, the worst of the bands, which, I don't know, what was it, uh, a Dead Leopard or Sick Cougar or, or some of those. <laughs> Canadian film shot digitally on a very, very low budget. Two mulleted, head-banging best friends are chosen as the subjects for a documentary about the common man. Ever since I quit smoking, I've just been f***ing coughing up the weirdest shit. Between the beer-chugging sequences or the trips to the doctor to battle testicular cancer, this mockumentary is an unexpected emotional roller coaster. But Terry, he just, you know, he treats me just like old Diener, you know? Basically, what I want to do is just get back on the, on, in the saddle, so to speak, and start jamming again. Touching on themes of friendship, loyalty, maturity, and rocking out, Fubar is both raucously funny and, at times, tender. To feral, to feral. Number three, best in show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to see that. Beatrice, can you look at us? Come on, honey. Mommy and Daddy are over here. The world of pompous dog contests gets the Christopher Guest treatment in Best in Show, which follows five canine entrants and their owners at the Mayflower Kennel Club Dog Show. The, the energy that this building will exude will be phenomenal with winners and, and losers. Uh, although no one loses, we don't like to say that, but let's face it, some people have a long drive home. <laughs> with many of Guest's perennial favorite actors filling the roles, this mockumentary earned high praise from critics. Excuse me? We met at Starbucks. Not at the same Starbucks, but we saw each other at different Starbucks across the street. 
mm -hmm. from each other. From a hyper-competitive yuppie couple to a small-town store owner with a secret yen to be a ventriloquist. I'm the best one to get a sing. The dog owners are a mixed lot, and they make for some genuinely hilarious moments. She's just checking out the dog's uh, testicular area oh. to make sure <laughs> to make sure that uh, that everything is intact. Hate to go out on a date with Judge uh, Edie Franklin, have her judge me. That'd be no fun. Number two, Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Yekshimash, I'm my name is Borat. I like you. I like sex. It's nice. Sasha Baron Cohen's unique style of guerrilla mockumentary making burst onto the big screen with Borat. It was so well received, he continued the style in 2009's Bruno. But Borat is the more successfully realized. There's some showers up there. Check that out on live point Doppler 16 radar this morning. Thank hey. you. Very nice. <laughs> have me. <laughs> What's your name? Um, we're on air right now doing the weather. What's your name? Cohen's title character is a journalist from Kazakhstan on a tour of the United States, which results in significant culture shock and silliness. So a not joke was, I would say, that suit is black. Not. Uh, this suit is not black. No, no, not has to be the end. Okay. Okay. This suit is black nut. Many of the interactions are with real people who believed Cohen was the character he portrayed. And this approach leads to some unexpectedly honest reactions, for better or worse. And my name is Borat. Chavez, man. Nice to meet you. Yo, get the f out of here before I break your jaw, bro. Yo, okay. shut the f off. Bro. Okay. F with the wrong one, man. Okay, sorry. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ah, look at this. It's my first drive by. Ah, go. You've become the epitome of a fing. I made it here despite the efforts of a few. So now it's time to simply say f you. That's fing ironic. In the company of a Chinese person, he begins to develop oriental features. By now, word has gotten out to the press, and the public, thirsting for thrills and novelty, is immediately captivated. It wasn't until the next day that um, uh, Matthew was reviewing the, um, the footage that uh, there was a, an image of Alice. From a Midwestern SNL, he puts the money in a quick drying ink well. Takes a loss, gets cross, walks to the corner store, pulls a knife, calls his wife, can't take it anymore. Number one, this is Spinal Tap. Rob Reiner's fictional rockumentary, This is Spinal Tap, was not the first mockumentary but it laid the groundwork for all that came after it. Good drama. Great look, good drama. Good, yeah, good yeah, drama. Fine. What happened to him? He died. He, he died in a bizarre gardening accident. The film follows the fictitious heavy metal band Spinal Tap on a problem-plagued U.S. tour. 5249. We're getting on the six. And we got a couple of people up there. But uh, today, we're raising the heart of the truckers. From its vision of a teeny tiny Stonehenge set, to an amp that memorably goes to 11. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? This is Spinal Tap is comic brilliance. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. So much so that the lead actors have continued to reunite the band periodically for some memorable concerts and recordings. Do you agree with our choices? What other outrageous mockumentaries should we have added to this list? One other thing, can you switch off uh, the television because no. I made a farce and I'm on the verge of buying Mr. Margorium's Wunderbar Emporium. For more enthralling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. With its cute little derriere, yes, God loves a terrier.